Hey, my name is Sean Sean. I sell art on SeanSean.co and specials on eBay. Today we're going to review The Call of the Wild. So if you don't know, The Call of the Wild is a famous book by, I want to say Jack London. And it's kind of, the whole book is based on the personality of the dog and the mentality of the dog and how he's passed through various owners before eventually bridging out into the wild on his own. So it has, you know, it's a real challenge because I think, so, you know, Buck starts off with this kind of this rich judge, a really rich family, obviously they can afford this huge St. Bernard, but he's kind of a nuisance to the owners, kind of breaking stuff, knocking things over, eating Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> and so they put him outside and then unfortunately he's kidnapped because there's this great demand for dogs with the gold miners. And then he's sent way up north to the Klondike He's bought by a post office dog, herd pack, and these two people run the dogs back and forth through the wilderness. And eventually, you know, the post office is, has to retire the dogs because of the telegraph coming up, and then people are just telegraphing because it's so hard to transport the mail and very slow, obviously. So they sell off the dogs, and then the dog is bought by a gold miner. These really terrible, or the third owners are these terrible, um, naive, rich gold miners and they're abusing the dogs and overloading the sled and eventually they kind of lose all the dogs except for buck buck is kind of saved by john thornton who's this wilderness guy has kind of given up on his life because he lost his son and then his wife and then he's just like kind of lost in his own world and buck hangs around him and then eventually kind of encounters wolves and then runs away with the wolves once um john thornton is killed uh so it has kind of these all these sets of owners you see how humans treat um, animals and in the film they kind of had to make the decision whether to kind of vocalize the thoughts of the dog or kind of tell it from the human side they tell it more from the human side i think that works because you can do a lot of interpretations through the dog's eyes what he's looking at how he smells how he acts like a dog everyone kind of knows how a dog acts so i mean that's believable so that kind of doesn't translate from the book you could say because the book is going to be all literary so you can talk about the dog from a dog's perspective but in the film you have to visually show it even maybe it comes off a little kludgy or clunky if you have it the dog talking or vocalizing his thoughts and so it's really kind of the human's account of this particular dog you know one of the things is this film probably wasn't able to do until very recently because of the cgi you really have to cgi all the dogs the wolves because they're so difficult they're not doing just kind of a comedy where the dogs are just jumping and doing dumb stuff and then they they cgi a little bit they kind of have to cgi the whole dog almost and i think through this film they've kind of cgi most of the dog they're, they might have used real dogs here and there but you know they're having to at least cgi the effects onto the face and then showing the dog slide kind of going through and i don't think I think those were all fully CGI'd from what I can tell. So, you know, they really couldn't do this film until recently. It's a really good book. I read the book. It's a classic. And then I thought, wow, this is going to, how can this be so, such a good book? You know, with the dogs, it was kind of a silly kids film, but man, it really grips you in the book, right? With this dog. And, you know, they kind of soften up, I think, the ending a little bit with the dog kind of runs with the pack and then it's a friendly pack. But I think in the book that was more roughed up with the wolves, I don't remember quite exactly, but it seemed like it was a more brutal take because especially when he has to battle the lead dog when he's part of the dog sled, that's pretty brutal. And I think they eat one of the dogs or something. <laughs> it's kind of like more brutal in the book as well as the end, the end guy that kind of saves the dog. I think he's a gold miner as well in the book versus kind of this wilderness guy. So there's a little bit of difference I think in the book. And yeah, it's kind of a telling tale of, you know, how humans are good or bad with dogs and how they've kind of derivative from wolves but they're still kind of wolves at heart the other weird thing in the post office i don't remember but yeah there's this post office kind of couple and they take the mail back and forth and then the and in this scene they're showing kind of inuit kind of woman i think with indian heritage been americanized or canadianized in this case and perot who's also kind of the french post office but he's a black guy and you're like is this possible i know the fr i mean i guess it works if it's within the canada side of the border because canada all the slaves ran away with Canada, and there were probably 10, 15 years of in integration. So there was kind of a lot more ahead of American society, but this is the, kind of the 1890s or, you know, yeah, 1849 or so. I'm just like, this is before slavery. So would they be that high up in society to be a post office? And would they, you know, be paired up with this woman? It's kind of like, eh, I don't know if it's PC culture in Hollywood or they're being accurate to the book. It's hard to say. But yeah, so it's kind of interesting there. I really like the aspect of the, la the second to last owners who are these kind of 
obnoxious, naive, rich people that became the owners and they're just go off the deep end. They kill off the dog pack by accident because they overwork them. So that's really captured well. The other thing was in the beginning, they kind of do a literary history of why there's this gold rush. And I think they could have done it better in the sense of just having people talk in the town like, oh, there's gold up here. I'm going to pack up. I'm going to go too. What are you going to do? And show the excitement so that you know why the dog is kidnapped and more kind of, I think they could have shot that a little differently to get more excitement. And then you're like, oh, the dog seized, which they get the seizing part, but they don't get kind of that backstory right for me, I would say. Overall, I think it's a pretty good take on the story. So I would recommend it. Pretty good for your kids as well. And if you want to subscribe, you can subscribe. And I'll see you on the next movie review. Thanks for watching, guys. Thank you.